Hey there. Okay, it is day number three. Day number three on our challenge to help make parenting easier for you. Okay, does anybody have a child that disagrees with them or seems to repeatedly be uncooperative? Has anybody ever had a household where the bedtime routine takes hours longer than you thought it was supposed to because every single step your child gives you pushback. Like you say, let's head to the bathtub. And they're like, no. Or they take a few steps and then they seem to head into the playroom and get distracted by that. And so it just is incredibly exhausting for you parents because you're like, this is taking forever. And it is so frustrating and annoying. And you're thinking there has to be a better way. And today we are going to talk about a couple better ways. Again, if you just landed here, I am Kelly. I am a parenting coach, pediatric occupational therapist, mom of three teenagers, cradle Catholic, Catholic mindset coach, and I have been in the space of helping families and kids and difficult behavior for over 20 years. So I have seen everything in regard to the behavior that kids can dish out and the aggravation and the frustration and the challenge for parents to figure out a way to have a household that is peaceful and runs smoothly and everybody seems okay. So because I'm me, and I often say this phrase, because I'm me and I understand that God created me unique, different from you, different from any other mom, different than any other occupational therapist out there, I do what works and feels the best for me. Now, obviously, because of my education and training as an occupational therapist, that weighs in also. But I'm always encouraging just that understanding of our uniqueness. And I always want parents to be operating from their uniqueness. What works the best to support the parent? What works the best to support the um, morals and the values and the, um, how you want your home life to flow and function and what you want to be about? Um, but because I'm me, I do things my way, which is often opposite a lot of what the normal parent response is to a child's behavior. And at the beginning, a couple days ago on our challenge, we talked about that that behavior that comes out often bad as a fit, a tantrum, a meltdown, um, talking back, not cooperating, all of these things are just an indication that there's something else going on inside that child. Yesterday, we talked about the sensory system and how it could be something in a child's sensory system that makes them feel unsafe or um, just, you know, agitated or not settled and okay. So again, I'm operating in a different, different way than a lot of parents do. So I often do the opposite. So today we are going to talk about just the challenges of having kids who do not cooperate and what would I do because I'm me. So the majority of parents who want to put more force, more control on a child who will not cooperate. So your child is saying, no, no, I don't want to take a bath. No, I don't want to go with you. No, no, no. And remember that phase of no, you're like, is it ever going to end? And the answer is usually no, not for a while. Um, so the answer that most parents will try to manage their child's bad behavior of no, and I won't do that, and mm -mm, is by putting more force, 
more control in more punitive things. I'm going to put you in time out. I'm going to take this away. We're going to do all these things. And they still don't have the result that they want. They still don't have a child who cooperates. They still don't have a child who listens. And so parents are like, wait, what? Why isn't this working? Okay, so I want to give you today a strategy that's going to work. But it's the opposite of what most people would think to do. And so if your child is not cooperating, I want you to give them more choices. So I am all about empowering kids. I am all about giving them ways to show up how God created them to be. God created every single person unique. We, are, we want to have autonomy. We want to own our uniqueness. We want to understand what feels right in our body with our sensory system and our internal alarm system and our emotional system and our balance system and our muscle system and our social system, our friends and our community. All of that is we want to, again, own and understand and show up in a way that is unique to how God created us to be. And so even at a very young age, a child is wants to put this in place. They want to have autonomy. They want to have a say in their life. And so if they don't, if they feel like they don't, and again, for young kids, think of, what do they have a say in? They really don't. They don't have a say in what time they go to bed. They don't have a say usually in what is placed before them in a meal. They, um, they don't get to say when we're going to the park or what they're going to do. They're just kind of expected to go along with the flow of whatever the parent thinks is best for them. And it works for a little while. And some kids, again, have natural tendencies. Their personality is more agreeable. Some kids are not. They are very much, um, you know, will give you pushback. They are very much have their own mind right from the get-go. And this is how God created them. And this is going to be awesome later on. But right now, it's very aggravating to parents. So... I just want to give you some ways to give your kids choices because it will make your life so much easier. You will not be getting as much pushback. You will not be getting the bedtime routine lasting for hours because we are going to give choices to mitigate that. But here's the thing. We are going to give choices about all the things that you parents do not care about. All the minutia, all the little stuff throughout the day, these are the choices that you are going to let your young child have in regard to how their day is going to function. And when we give them the little choices about things that you and I don't care about, these children register that they got a say in their life. They want to have a choice about things in their life. And again, that is very fair. Even from the age of three, they want to choose something. Now I'm going to let them choose. Do you, what color pajamas do you want after our bath time? Red or blue? Do you want the long sleeve ones or the short sleeve ones? Okay. We're taking a bath. I'm not giving a child a choice on a bath every night. Do you want bubbles in the water or no bubbles? They can have a choice about that. Do you want the water up high in the bathtub or do you want the water down low? Do you want the water a little bit cooler or a little bit hotter? And parents, I have in my monthly membership, which is um, a way parents can join me for the month, I have um, a power struggle script sheet. I have basically, it's a long list of things that you can give your your kids choices on. And again, my goal always is to make parenting easier for you. I want you to parent smarter and easier, not, not harder. So I can give a thousand choices 
I can exhaust a small child in like 10 minutes. Um, do you want to walk in front of me or do you want to walk behind me? Do you want to hold my left hand as we walk to the door or my right hand? Do you want to hold my pinky? I mean, I can get down to the minutia. And these little kids will look at me like, oh my goodness, I'm so tired from all the choices. So give them lots of choices. All they want is a say in their life. And it can be about the most minuscule stuff. So when I'm giving all these little choices, red pajama or blue, they're picking, oh, I want the red ones. Yeah, good. And so when they register, I got to pick the red. I chose it myself. That fills a need in them to, again, God created to have a say in their life. And so they're not giving me pushback on the bathtub because they got to pick three things about their bath. They got to pick what temperature the water's gonna be, how high the water's gonna go up, and if they want bubbles or not. So they're not resisting me on the bath because I've given them three choices about the bath that I could care less. I don't care, hot or cold, bubbles, no bubbles. They're getting clean, I'm washing their hair. My, that was my goal. So, so I just, um, again, wanna help you parents because there are choices you can be giving your kids a million times a day that will be a game changer for you. And especially for those kids who are more headstrong they definitely have an opinion and they're not going to, you know, if you try to kind of distract them or redirect them, they're like, uh -uh, I'm coming right back here and I don't want to do that. So I distract by giving them other choices to make about, you know, the process of something we're doing. So if we're getting in the car to go to school, do you want to walk in front of me or behind your brother? Not we're not headed to the car because we are. But again, I can give lots of choices on the way. Or do you want to carry your backpack or do you want me to? Or, you know, do you want to hold both water bottles or only one and I'll have your sister carry the other one? So even again, all these little things that don't matter to you matter a lot to your young child. And one thing about me always is I am always playing the long game. So some parenting professionals will, you know, tell parents it's totally fine. Do what works in the moment to get you the result you want in that moment. I do not operate that way because my goal is for you to have a healthy, developmentally, sound individual who is growing from birth to adulthood. And so I don't want to have you put something in place today when they are three, that's going to backfire when they are 13. So, um, so I'm always telling parents to give choices when they are young. Okay. Does anybody have one of these friends as an adult who seems to be unable to make decisions. Anybody? Anybody have a friend who calls like 13 friends before they can pull the trigger on a new purse or what type of flowers to put on their back porch? Okay, I, I have some of these and I would have to guess that as children, these adults, were not allowed to give their choice in a lot of things. And so here is another reason that why long-term giving your kids lots of little choices now is so important because they are learning about themselves. They are learning what I like, what I don't like, what feels good, what feels like me. Maybe your child picked those red pajamas and they were long sleeved and it is super hot. And so the next night, you know, he's like, no way. Those red pajamas with the long sleeves, those were so hot. I'm not wearing those ever again. He's learning, you know, this, I don't like the long sleeves. And so this is so good because even at these young ages,
this is good self-awareness for kids to know. And then we're going to allow them to keep making choices, keep able to be choosing things in their life, what's going on with them every day. And so then when they're an adult, they don't have to call 13 friends to say, what type of flowers should I put on my back porch? They're going to know. And so one thing that I have been told by families that I have worked with is that I help parents understand how it's okay to be okay in your uniqueness. And I want kids to know themselves well. I want them to know what feels right to them, right in their emotions, feels right in their body in regard to what we talked about yesterday, that their nervous system feels safe and calm and okay, their muscles are relaxed, that their sensory system doesn't have any alarms or bells or whistles going off. Because when that, their body feels okay, there are chemicals that are released in their brain and body and allow for their optimal learning, their optimal engagement, their optimal um, impact with the environment and understanding of their purpose that God gave them here on earth. And so I want them to be able to know what they like at three and also at 13 and also at 33 and 93. And it starts, yeah, that they practice now. Okay, I want the red pajamas. I want lots of bubbles. I want the highest, hottest water in the bath. It's little, little things that they're, that they're choosing. And again, it helps them for that long game of knowing themselves, making a decision, being secure in that decision. They're also learning, whoops, um, okay, I picked the, I made the wrong decision and that, okay, that that's okay too. Again, I'm normalizing, talking about with families and parents and kids. You can make a mistake. You know, you, it was raining today and you picked those sequin slip on little shoes to go to school. And it looks fantastic with that pink skirt and that purple thing you've got on your head. But your feet are going to be cold. And so your child might have to learn that the hard way. Yeah, I should have gone with the blue galoshes. They didn't look with the outfit, but I want kids to experience that themselves. Can I tell them, yep, your toes are going to get cold. You're not wearing the pink sequin slip-ons. You need to wear the galoshes. It's safer. I'm the mom. I'm going to control you. I'm going to tell you what to do. You can do that. But again, I encourage parents to let your kids figure it out a little bit. Now, am I going to allow them to go to school with no coat? No. So just know, again, that there's kind of, you know, I always say that I have kind of a very firm boundary of how, you know, um, how I operate. And so, of course, it's safe. Of course, it's always in keeping with um, a child's health there and not just their physical health, like their mental health, their emotional health, their spiritual health. It's all of that. But then if I have gotten all of those things, okay, then I want to allow a child to have a lot of flexibility within that boundary of wellness and safeness and health a lot of flexibility to screw up or to want the high bubbles, lots of room for them to learn and discover and explore about themselves because God did not put them here to just follow direct orders from their parent. They are here to, even at a young age, to be able to make a choice to choose something for their life because it helps them later down the road. So give lots of choices. I promise you, it will make the power struggles you are having with your kids just kind of dissipate, which is fantastic because that means your bedtime routine just got cut in half because 
You're like, do you want to take a bath? And they're like, oh yeah, all of a sudden they are running to get a bath because they know, that, oh, you know what? They get to pick the bubbles or not. And they get to pick how hot the water is going to be. And they get to pick how high. I think I want the water to go a little higher than yesterday. All of these kids, they're, I mean, they're thinking about it. That is fun. That is exciting. That is the adventure of choosing something in their life, which I'm all about that adventure. And I promise you, God is all about that too. He did not put us here to just be these little minions who are following his order. No, he is in community with us and he wants us to have choices and to explore and to mess things up and to try again. And that's exactly how we need to support our kids. And so I encourage you today to give lots of choices. And in our Facebook group, come comment, how does that work? Because parents a lot of times will look at me and they'll be like, this isn't gonna work, Kelly. I promise you, this child is giving me so much pushback. You're telling me I'm supposed to give them more choices. I'm like, yep, just please do what I ask and Tell me in a couple days. And they report back and they're like, it's made the biggest difference. And it does make the biggest difference. And if you think of yourself as an adult, I absolutely do not want somebody telling me what to do all the time. I want to be able to say how hot my coffee is, what I'm going to listen to on Spotify, how fast I'm going to jog down the street, which is not fast, slow. But I don't want somebody telling me how to show up every minute of my day. And your kids don't either. Not even from these young, young ages. So give them that freedom. Give them lots of choices. Again, not a choice about having healthy food at, at dinner time. Not a choice about taking the bath. Again, the things that matter to you, to your home, with your husband, with, that matter to your family, you are not giving one inch on those things. But all the rest of the stuff, give all of it. A choice, a choice, a choice, a choice. Right and left. Again, let me know in the Facebook group if you can exhaust your child between the time they wake up and the time you get them out the door to the park or to school or whatever with choices. If you can do that, win. High five. You did it. Because... That is so good. And I promise you, kids will look up and they're like, oh, I can't pick one more thing, which is great. Then you filled their little tank, that invisible bank inside their body of, I want to pick today. My autonomy bank, they want it to be full. And so once you get it filled up, they're pretty much like, okay, I'll do whatever you say. Yep. Go into the car. Yep. Go into nap. Up. Oh, time for a bath. They're going because they've met that need to show you they want to be independent and have a say. And so they're more agreeable. And that makes your job easier, which I'm always all about. Okay, so go in the Facebook group. Tell me what choices that you have given your child and the effect of it. And I want to invite you to join my monthly membership. What this monthly membership is, is it is a weekly group coaching call. I do it on Thursdays and parents, we all join on a Zoom call and parents can be putting in what's going on this week with their family. I have a struggle with this. Potty training that. I have a picky eater. I have a child who's escaping out of their bed. I just moved them from a crib to a toddler bed. We had two nights of it going great. And now we've been up half the night. Kid won't stay in their bed. What are we going to do? Again, all of these situations I have been dealing with for over 20 years with lots of different families. And so I can quickly give you some tips different than probably what, what you know right now, which is always my goal, to make it easier for you. Also, I have different resources in the monthly membership that, again, like this Power Struggle script sheet. So you're going to look down and you're going to have 15 choices you can give your child right when they crawl out of bed first thing in the morning. 
Now, this is just to get you and your spouse thinking, okay, this is how we would do it. And then you're off to the races. You're going to be, you know, given choices on all kinds of stuff going forward. But again, just helping you get that first step and then you've got it. Also, I give lots of resources from my occupational therapy brain. So I have, again, an understanding of what skills does each child need at what age and stage to do the things to, you know, meet that milestone, to meet that developmental um, cutoff for school. Or so I understand what skills a child has to have. And then to get that skill of, let's say, for the example, cutting with scissors, that involves multiple skills. To do that one thing, you have to have good um, fine motor. You have to have good posture and trunk. You have to have good vision and perceptual skills. So I also understand all the skills that go into the skill to get these kids growing and um, meeting you know, developmental things that they need for healthy growth and development. And again, the biggest thing for parents is the behavior because you are having your child give you behavior that you don't like. And I say this often, that healthy, normal childhood development looks occasionally until we can tweak it and make it more desirable, it will look like a fit. It will look like a power struggle. It will look like a battle at um, bath time. Until we can figure out what that child really needs, because again, that behavior isn't, isn't it. There's something underneath there that that child needs, but it's coming out, being communicated through their behavior in a way that, that we don't want. So I'm never allowing that undesirable behavior. I had a parent ask me, she said, okay, if we know the child is on point, it's healthy development, that's good. Should I just give in to my kid with this fit or with this particular thing? Because it's a good, we want healthy development. And I said, no, because your life is miserable. This child is making your family life miserable. No, you never have to put up with that. I have lots of strategies and tools to make your outcome different. You can have a peaceful home. You can have harmony in your home. You can be really connected to your child and in a really good way, but also be really firm and have your child feel really safe and happy. And you are supported as a parent. Again, I'm always about your unique parenting, how, what you need for you to support you and your family. Um, okay. One quick thought that I want to make clear because this has come up also in regard to discipline. Discipline is the one place I will never give a child a choice in the moment of their discipline. Okay. So say you have a child who is being mean to his younger sister and you said, Hey, you know what? Not okay. Please don't do that anymore. Brother does it again, like they do, right? So you say, hey, I've asked you, would you please not do that to your sister? That is not kind. If you do this again, this will be the consequence. You are going to have to write 10 times, I will not be mean to my sister. So brother, because he just had to, something was just making him be unkind to his sister again, does it. And then you've warned him, this is what the consequence will be. And now you have to enforce that consequence. And some people will say, well, I just don't like that term consequence. Okay, we don't have to call it consequence. I can call it an outcome, an end result. I mean, in the 20 years that I have been doing this, the the terms and the buzzword and the whatever, like it's going to come and go over all this time. I can, again, I can work around what, whatever we need to call it to make everybody okay with it um, easily. So, but the result here is brother needs to write 10 sentences that, you know, I'm not going to do this to my sister. So all of a sudden brother's like, I don't want to, I don't want to write the sentences. 
I don't want to, mom. I don't know. I don't like it. So I'll have moms ask me, well, what do I do? And what they need to do is enforce that punishment because you want your kids to trust you. You want to do what you say you are going to do because that makes a child feel safe. So in this instance, mom had to enforce the 10 sentences. And the little boy did about three or four. And then he was like, I don't want to anymore. I'm tired. My hand hurts. Can I stop? Can I just do five? And the mom was like, is that okay? Can I let him just do five? No, they don't get a choice in their, you know, in the consequence or the outcome. And here's what I will do. I will not give a choice in that moment. This is what I said you were going to have to do. I will enforce that you have to write 10 sentences. Now, this is 10 sentences. I will not be unkind to my sister. I didn't say scrub the garage with a toothbrush. I didn't say you're going to write it 7,000 times till you feel like your hand's going to fall off. So again, I'm very intentional about, I'm not getting, giving um, a consequence that is out of the realm of what would be okay to, again, the goal is that um, your son is going to think next time when he's being unkind to his sister, he's going to think, Ooh, I, I don't think I want to do that because I don't want to write those sentences again. So that's, that's how we're motivating not to do it again. And remember, we asked him twice before, please don't. We don't want you to do this. This isn't nice for your sister. So we've given him a couple, a little bit of grace there, which I always do. I'm always giving kids the right, you know, an opportunity to step into that right behavior that I want. So I don't just punish or, you know, get, immediately say, you know, I saw you be mean to your sister. Get over here and write 10 sentences. I do not parent that way. I do not encourage parents to parent that way. I want my kids to know, hey, I am going to meet you halfway. I want to work with you. This is not okay behavior. I want you to know it. Look me in the eye. Not going to treat our sister like this. Let's see if you can, you know, move forward and not show up in a, in a mean way. Well, he showed up in a mean way. So then I have to do something. But I do not give any choice in that discipline. And I will have kids who will say, that was so mean. That was so terrible. You were just the worst. Um, and I'll say, you know what? Okay. If, if you really feel so strongly that this consequence or this end result or this one action that you had to do based on a choice that you made that really wasn't the best choice in that situation, then call a family meeting and give me two or three things that you think would be more fair. And I will do this. I have done this a lot with my three kids. If you think I'm being unfair, again, I'm, I want to be in partnership with my kids. And so give me a consequence that you think is fair. And so, of course, they're like, yeah, I'm about the family meeting. Okay. And they'll come up with two or three things that are not a consequence at all. You know, like my son might say, yeah, I have to go to my room and that's it. Well, to go to your room and lay on your bed, um, that actually sounds pretty good. So that wouldn't be a thing. But I will allow them to, again, have a say, not in the moment of the discipline. We're going to follow through on what we said. But you can have a choice later in, in what that outcome looks like. It has to be something, again, that would be motivating for them not to, to do something. So is Will going to be motivated not to be mean to his sisters if all he has to do is go back in his bedroom and lay on his bed? Probably not. So in that family meeting, I would say, yep, we can talk about it. You bring your three things. We both have to be meeting our goal in that Will has to feel like it's fair and I haven't been horribly mean and I have to feel like, well, it's, it's a little bit painful enough to try to keep you from doing it again. 
but I'm absolutely about working with that and hearing my kids, um, again, hearing what they say about it because I want them to have a say in their life. And I also want them to know, I value your opinion about your life. I know that you, you know, you are capable, even at young ages, of starting to have a say in what feels good, what feels safe, what would work for you. I don't, I can't promise you that I can, you know, 100% agree every time, but I can listen to it and I can hear it and let you know, again, you will be heard. You are seen, you are loved every time. Okay. Okay. So that is it for day three. Go get in the Facebook group. Tell me about all those awesome choices you are making. Go sign up for my membership. We have fun in there. I also give everybody um, a game every month and I break it down from my OT brain and tell you, okay, I like it because it builds this gross motor skill. And I like it because I'm working on visual motor skills. And so yesterday, when I gave you that pyramid of learning, I don't know what I did with it today, um, there was higher things like body skiing, ocular motor skills, um, eye-hand coordination, all each of those things, all the way up that pyramid. In fact, in the red area at the top was activities of daily living. I know all about that. Activities of daily living is all the tasks and activities your kids have to do every single day, every human does. So also for you as the parent, what are your activities of daily living? Well, you got to get up, you got to let the dog out, you got to brush your teeth, you got to get the kids up, you know, you got to fix the lunch. All of those are your activities of daily living. And what skills does it take? What do we have to do to get those accomplished for you and for your child? But it starts, you know, at those at those bottom levels of having a central nervous system that is regulated and a OK, a sensory system on top of that that is like, yeah, I feel safe. I'm calm. I'm OK. Cardiovascular system that the heart rate is just normal and everything's good. So um, anyway, so the skills, the game is another free thing in the membership. What else do I get? I've got like, oh, I have a prayer bundle in there for parents. This is so helpful. Like there are ways to cover your children in prayer. And as a parent, you have authority to take authority over your kids. And so there are ways to do that. I find so many parents who don't really know. Okay, that is a huge thing. Like there is a battle going on. And so you're going to strap your child into their car seat to take them out. You need to strap their car seat on in a spiritual way. And so I give you ideas for that too. There's three or four other things and I change it around. Um, it's fun. It's good stuff. There's also an opportunity to work with me, um, just your family um, in a group in a one-on-one -on -one coaching call. So I would meet with you and your family about some very specific things. This is the perfect thing. If you have some really, um, some struggles that have been going on for a while, like, or you might have something that feels off about one of your kids that you've been trying to kind of get worked out for maybe nine months or a year, it's not going well. That would be usually the family that, um, I work with, again, it's three months every week, we're going to knock stuff out. I work with kids who have dyslexia, kids who have dysgraphia, kids who have some behavior stuff going on in schools that parents are like, what in the world do I do with that? Who do I have um, evaluate this kid? What does it mean if the principal's saying this? Again, all of this I have been working with for years. So you don't have to struggle. You don't have to do it alone. I'm here for you and I am here with you. Okay, come join tomorrow.